Hi. Um, so what do these people have in common? Of course, apart from their uh, terrible choice of boxer shorts, um, they have in common the same thing we all do have in common, which is we eat food. So we eat food on a daily basis. We eat food maybe an hour a day, we prepare it, etc., uh, cook it. We're surrounded by different types of food, but yet our concept of food is very, very simplistic and narrow. Um, basically, we think that food um, gives us enough energy to uh, basically do our uh, daily activities. But food is much, much more than that. When we eat food, we don't think of the sheer quantity of DNA we're actually ingesting. So, for example, in a grain of rice, there's 12 chromosomes of DNA. And um, th if you open up and uncoil the DNA and put it back to back, that's about a meter of DNA within one grain of rice. Now, an apple has three million cells, so each cell containing one meter, so three million uh, cells uh, each containing one meter. So um, if you think of it in, in other terms, um, maybe uh, two weeks of consuming food uh, or a month for some people will we'll consume enough DNA to take us to the moon and back, which is a lot of DNA. So what is this DNA doing in our bodies? Um, so of course it's given us energy, um, but there's a few theories out there that the DNA is going down and some of the, the genes are actually getting exchanged with the microbes in your gut. So the microbes are acquiring these plant, for example, our, our, our meat uh, genes, and they might be even expressed in those, uh, in those uh, bacteria. And what's interesting, um, we know a lot about protein, so we thought for uh, quite a while that we get our protein from cow and recently realized that we also get it from horse. Uh, but whatever the source of protein, uh, whether it's an apple, etc., proteins are really interesting because there's such a variety of proteins. So for example, in milk, in one glass of milk, there's about a thousand different proteins, each having a very, very different function from one another. Um, and what's interesting is that um, uh, um, people have also a simplistic idea of proteins. They think that proteins uh, give us, gives us muscle, uh, tone, etc. We look like bash after consuming protein. Uh, but uh, like I said, proteins are very, very diverse. They carry a lot of different functionalities. Um, and uh, for example, they're the best builders, the best transporters, the best uh, 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 destructors in the world. So um, they're very efficient at doing those so stuff. So for example, in milk, there's these caseins. They're proteins that transport calcium from the milk into your body. And what's interesting is without these proteins, we won't be able to uptake any calcium from milk. They're very efficient at grabbing the calcium before it agglomerates and we can't take it up anymore. Um, but what's interesting as well is as the proteins descend in your digestive tract, they get broken down in small fragments. And those fragments in science we call peptides. And these peptides are really interesting because some of them are what we call functional peptides, are bioactive peptides. And bioactive peptides is what I refer to as whispers. They go down into your body and whisper to your cells by actually binding to the receptors of your cells in, in your body and telling them things. For example, reduce your cholesterol, reduce your inflammation, or you reduce your diabetes, which is really, really interesting. Um, also, um, as, as proteins get broken down, they get broken down in single amino acids, which give us energy as well. So what I'm telling you is that basically you have a protein, you have loads of proteins in food, different proteins, they get broken down in different fragments, and some of them, um, these here are called peptides, bioactive peptides, they actually communicate and tell to your body to do things you don't even know they're telling your body to do. For example, lower cholesterol for someone that has cholesterol, or uh, your full stop eating. Um, so with the um, advances in technology, uh, such as the area I work in, which is bioinformatics and experimental work, we're able now to go into food and find those proteins and extract the peptides that lower, for example, diabetes. So what is the future of food? The future of food, as I see it, is functional food. It's where a th three people, let's say, one uh, suffering from uh, cardiovascular diseases, one from diabetes, one from cancer, could enter a supermarket and buy the same cereal bar, if they all like the same cereal bar, but with the added benefit of those molecules added to them, uh, natural molecules extracted from other foods, added to them that would lower diabetes, would lower cardiovascular disease, and would lower cancer. So. Um, Basically, if you go back again to uh, humankind, uh, the future of food, of course, won't change their sense of fashion. I just had to change the colors there to give them a little bit of boost. But um, what it will do, basically, is that um, for each section in the, in, the, in, the, in, the, um, in the ages, you have, for example, uh, smaller ages will, will eat uh, cereal bars that would lower uh, their... Um, uh, their infection uh, would help them grow their bones. Uh, later stages, um, a person could eat bread
bread that would lower their diabetes, etc. So uh, next time you eat food, please remember all the DNA you're eating and all the proteins and their functionalities. Thank you.